I spent a month with this LG Ultrafine 4K monitor, the 32UN500W, and if you look on LG's website, they say that this is supposed to boost the new era of 4K HDR console gaming. But has my experience lived up to all their marketing hype? Hey guys, Tito James here. Welcome back to the channel where we take awesome out of the box. Here are the five things I think you should know before buying this 32 inch or 31.5 inch to be exact. 4K monitor starting off with point number one, it has a clean and classic aesthetic. Now, I know it's kind of funny to talk about how a monitor looks, but hey, it does matter to some people and LG has always done a great job in this department. It has a white back that would look really good if you have an open office layout or something similar to that while we're stuck at home. They've also done a pretty good job to minimize the bezels on the side and top so that the massive monitor doesn't quite stick out like a sore thumb wherever you decide to put it. Granted that you do still get those black bars on the edge, but it didn't really bother me that much. My my biggest gripe with the design of this monitor though has to do with its included stand. The base does have that recognizable circular design we've seen from LG's other offerings, but it is rather limited in the adjustments that it can do. You can tilt it up and down, but no height adjustments here, which was sad because despite its size, it did still sit a little low for me. Of course, this is easily remedied by a monitorizer and it does have a 100 by 100 vase amount on the back so you can attach it to a monitor arm like I did to get your desired height that's suitable for your work environment. On to point number two. For something that's marketed towards the new era of 4K HDR console gaming, it does kind of miss the mark. Let me show you guys the inputs and you'll immediately know why. So on the back, you do have the basics covered. You have a display port, which is what I use to hook this up to my PC, an audio jack to use for headphones or a pair of speakers, the port for power, and last but not least, two HDMI 2.0 ports. So yes, no HDMI 2.1 here. So if you were hoping to buy this to pair with your PS5 and get 120 Hertz of glory, this isn't the monitor for you. Then again, this would have a higher price tag if it did. So that was a pretty quick point. So let me just segue on to point number three, which has to do with the display itself. So it did get the job done for me, but let me be straightforward with you guys. I don't have a wide experience with monitors in general, so you can take what I say with a grain of salt. I did have a good time with this one though. Now I did have to get used to the sheer size of it and that's because I came from a 24 inch monitor before this one. So a little tip from me to you is to make sure that you have a desk deep enough so you're not too close to this big boy. It uses a VA panel which is known for better contrast ratios and I did appreciate that when I hopped back into Ghost of Tsushima for its director's cut. It just looked really good especially when you transition from grassy clearings into wooded areas in the game. I mean the upgraded version of this title definitely played a part in the wow factor but it did look fantastic on this display as well by the way this does support hdr10 but it is kind of middle of the road it's good just not mind-blowingly good now for those of you who are wondering if this would be good for editing again it gets the job done it's not the most color accurate display that i've ever tried and it did sit at the minimum dcip3 range that they have advertised on their website 81 percent and that's 95 percent on the srgb color gamut now this basically means that you can do some color work on this display, but if your work highly relies you on being spot on, then you might wanna choose something else from LG's lineup that might be a better fit for you. And actually that brings me to the fourth point that I think you should know about this monitor. In my opinion, it doesn't really have that clear standout feature that you might be looking for. Gamers are gonna look for higher refresh rates and better response time. I don't think I mentioned this yet. This is pegged at 60 Hertz and creatives might be looking for something with a bit more accuracy. Personally, I don't have a problem with the specs that it has because the games I play are mostly single player story driven titles. So I don't really need that competitive edge. And while I do a lot of video work, I don't color grade all that much. It's just to correct a few things. So again, while I did enjoy my time with this LG Ultrafine 4K monitor, I just feel like it'll get lost in the shuffle with all of their other offerings in their lineup right now. By the way, it does support FreeSync and you get special features like super resolution, which is like 4K upscaling and black stabilizers. So you have more control over how deep shadows get, but they are buried in the menu and you only have that single control nub on the bottom of the display, which was kind of hard to use. So apart from testing them out, I didn't really use them. Now this brings me to point number five, which is very important because it has to do with the price. 
the official SRP of the LG Ultrafine 4K UHD monitor, I'll have the model name on the bottom of the screen, is 31,399 pesos. But as of recording this video, it's on sale at 28,259 which is rather steep, especially if you look at the price of this monitor in other markets. It's listed at $350 on their US site, which is nearly half the price. Now I know there are taxes and duties to take in consideration, but you do have reviews for this monitor saying that it's a good budget entry into 4K. Now if LG Philippines manages to match or get somewhere close to that price in the US, this would be a really good deal. So there you go guys, those are the five things I think you should know before buying this LG Ultrafine 4K monitor, the 32UN500-W. I know I didn't cover all the bases, I go a bit more in depth in my article in the website. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link down below. Also, if you want an alternative to this particular model from LG as well, I do suggest going to the Modern Creatures to check out the one that they featured. I'll leave a link somewhere on screen. But if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, sub to the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try my best to get to them as soon as I can. For all the latest in tech, head to unbox.ph plus follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, listen to our podcast on Spotify. My name is Tito James, peace, God bless. See you guys next time and please guys, stay safe.